howdy. I'm Cyber Axe with all on Digitally Crafted, and today we're continuing our series on complaints against Mojang. Today we're talking about how to make marketplace or the entire creator ecosystem better and why we have current problems with it and why these guides matter i hear from a lot of people that well cyber Axe, you're just you're just being dramatic you're just being selfish or or greedy and you you know my Mojang doesn't need to make all these guides for us. We, the community, should make the guides. Woo! Uh, let's talk about why that's not right. <clears throat> so, let's look at the current setup right now at in our creator system. So, if you're a new creator and you come into the system and you jump up and you use Blockbench Wizard, uh... The failure rate of Blockbench Wizard, in my estimates, and all these are estimates, is 5 to 10%, because Janice learns most of his stuff in his own words by trial and error. So he learned trial and error, not from an, an official source. Now, from the for the the Blockbench Wizards, he might have got some official sourcing in here just for those wizards, because Mojang paid for it. But overall, I found that like the item wizards is outdated. It's using 1.16.100 or 1.16.200 item files. Um, entity files are outdated. So there's still a pretty good failure rate in here. And it's still mostly learned by trial and error. So that creator then jumps over and hits the wiki, which was also created with trial and error. So it has a failure rate as well probably 10 to 15 or more percent on the wiki out outdated documents documents that are incorrect things that people fail uh trial and error and just misunderstood or they're making assumptions um you know where they're sh where they shouldn't now i'll give you a really quick example of that uh, i didn't have it ready but it, it's <clears throat> it's just a really good way to show um, that the trial and error approach has a whole bunch of issues with it. So when, um, you do something in bedrock events, uh, specifically a component group and you remove a component group and you add a component group on the wiki right now, it says that if you add it first and then remove it, it doesn't matter. And I saw someone recently say, oh, well, because you can only have one component at a time, this doesn't matter, right? You could just add and then remove and it doesn't matter. Now, <clears throat> I've been doing this for four or five years and I believe that that matters dramatically. Um, one, because we tested all the components and a whole bunch of components can have duplicates. A whole bunch of components can stack. A whole bunch of components are bugged. And when you apply two of them, you get a different result in different occasions. Some of the components um, merge. So you have stacking where it's plus, then you have merging where it replaces, and then you have some that just do random things. Now there's hundreds, I don't know, thousands of components, and you'll hear someone say, all components, and you're like, do you know that? Have you tested all components? Because we did have someone go through and test all the components about, I don't know, a year and a half ago, and was just blown away by how many of them bugged out, uh, duplicated, did all kinds of random things. Um, there was no universal stability. But yet the wiki, as a matter of fact, is saying add, then remove. This doesn't matter. Where I believe this matters a lot, you always remove a component or behavior before you add a component. This increases your stability and your likelihood of your failure rates. Now, this one core concept for events, this one thing is being taught to all of the people that are starting out and that are doing add-ons. So that failure rate is now 
inside the system because they went to the guides. Now, maybe that new creator hit one of CyberAxis guides and CyberAxis guides said, don't do what the wiki's doing. Because CyberAxis learned from trial and error and made a different assessment of this assessment that these people did. Now, neither of these are official. We're both, all three of us are guessing. So Janice is guessing, I'm guessing, um, and the wiki creators are guessing. There's no check and balance on any of this either. <clears throat> so the only way I have check and balance, and that's why my rates are higher, is because someone would have to complain and challenge and say that that's not right. The only way the wiki guides are fixed or challenged is somebody in the community. We have to challenge someone else in the community and say that's not right, which is very unlikely because nobody wants to tell other people they're wrong or challenge them, except it seems me. Um, so that's why I have 10 to 15 on the wiki because it's, it's there's more eyes, more people. I think there's a less chance of failure here. However, there's more guides, more people involved. So there might be more chance of failure there. This is hard to say. Um, whereas Cyberax is just by himself and he's doing it on himself. And so you have this 10 to 20% failure rate where neither of us, all three of us don't know what we don't know. And because there's no official source, the new creators could go to the wikis. You would hope the wikis would be a 1% failure rate. So you would hope, which isn't true right now, but you'd hope that they would get to the official docs and that's that's all they'd use and then they go but what they instead do is they're going to use my docs to do this my guides and then they're going to use these guides and then they're going to use some of these and they're going to get a, a mal malmigation malmigation no whatever a, a grouping an appending a merging of all of these failure rates and all this information so new creator comes to me gets to marketplace maybe they don't do now some of these are just going to be personal projects that's fine but they're still going to have that failure rate in their personal project the majority of people that we care about are going to marketplace because that's where the funding is going and mojang cares about mojang doesn't care about the personal projects so same thing with the returning creator returning creator comes down and has the same problem now in this the cost has been paid that the wiki creators the community has to put in time and money and energy to create the wikis cyber access put time and energy and money to create these guides and we have to do a lot of it because we're doing trial and error because there's no official source this cost is really high so this is thousands of hours okay now these guides are barely being done so there's really little cost there's little being done here at all now we get into marketplace and we start looking at, okay, well, if you only did the wikis and you didn't use cyber's guides, you're going to have a 10 to 15% failure rate, but you'll have more features than if you only did the documents because the documents aren't telling you about most of the features. So if you did just the documents, you'll probably have a 1% failure rate, but you'll have a lot less features. If you only use cyber's guides, then you're going to have a, 10 to 20 percent failure rate and if you used all three of them you're gonna have a five percent to thirty percent failure rate because cyber's guides may have fixed some of the wiki issues wiki issues may have fixed some of the cyber guides the documents may have fixed some of the wiki issues that are outdated and cyber guides maybe but you also could have picked up the failure rates from all three there's no reason saying that you didn't pick up the failure rate from cyber, the failure rate from guide, and the failure rate from docs because they're all different failures, right? We're not failing at the same thing. We're failing in different places. So you could have somebody that used all three docs come out and have a 30% failure rate and have really bad stability, um, but still have some features because you used all three guides. So you know what's available. You're able to use all the features, but your failure rates and your problems and your bugs and your quality is really low. Now, if you only went through and use the MS docs, you should have better stability, but less happy customers because you had less features. So you have less happy customers, but more stability. So it's kind of, it may be a wash there. If you just use the wikis, you have less stability, but more happy customers because of guides. And same with the cyber guides. The ultimate solution, of course, would be 
you use all of it, but we get this failure rate down so that we have happy uh, customers from stability and features. That would be the ultimate, right? So right now, when Mojang makes that money, the, that cut their cut from marketplace comes down here, and then it goes into profits. There is no feedback loop. So that the cost isn't being paid by Mojang and Microsoft to update these guides and make this loop pr correct. So the community is being um, relied on to educate these developers and these studios on how to do stuff for Marketplace without Mojang being involved. So Mojang's way off here. Maybe they do five guides out of you know the 500 that are needed or being used. So this is how it is now. The results are um, pretty poor. You have happy customers based on stability depending on where the creator learned their information. And then you have another problem I haven't put in here is when this creator gets through marketplace, makes a few of these, even if they have high failure rates, then they become an authority. So now this creator starts telling other people, new creators, this bad information. So they then use this information that they've corrected, bad info, and they're now putting it back into the wiki in many cases, or they're sometimes they'll help in um, Discord, but most of the time what's happening is this information, this bad information, is getting put back into their studio. So that studio now has a 5 to 40% failure rate because the information feedback loop Invalid. So now you have this incorrect feedback loop where the creator that got this information based off uh, learned from trial and error that wasn't correct, and he made a miscalculation or misanalysis of how this works, now thinks this is factual, pushes it around, comes back up here puts that bad information because nobody's challenging it. The official guides aren't challenging it. So now this bad information is now uh, looped back into the system, goes back into the wikis, back into the studio, and now comes into the new creators. So now this failure rate and this failure rate are, co are compounded because of this loop. So this is the current, and this is why things keep looping the wrong way. Because there's no official source to challenge any of these failure rates throughout this entire process. Now, let's look at how I'm suggesting it. And I know you guys think I'm just some Joe Schmo, cyber actress just out here complaining, but my one of my main corporate jobs, I have like seven or eight jobs, is corporate analysis to take corporations in the hundreds of millions in some cases down to very small corporations and literally map out their entire corporation, their profit margin, profit system, how their flow is, their education, their employment, their HR, their um, management systems, the entire thing, their IT network, their security systems. I've built networks for banks that have you know, 40 branches up to colleges and hospitals. And most of that is designing all of the network visually, doing this, working out the flow, working out security issues, working out where the access points go, where all of that stuff is, putting all that data in and com completing a complete analysis of the entire thing. So that's, that's what I'm paid for. This is what I do. So this isn't just something I just make up or I'm just blowing smoke up your ass. 
So here's the suggested solution. <clears throat> when a creator comes in or a returning creator comes in, they hit the official docs and the official docs have been updated by Mojang as the authority of the information. What that does is it means that the official docs are what are feeding CyberAxis guides. So now CyberAx is not trial and erring like I have been because there was no docs or there was no content. There was no education or information. There was no official source. I'm now getting it from Mojang, the official source, which starts at a 1% failure rate. So now my failure rates drop to 2 to 7%. I'm still going to make mistakes and the wiki guides go to two to five percent because now the wiki is getting their information from the official guides now i agree the community should make video guides the community should make this stuff to make the information that's official easier for all learners and all creators to learn from not to replace it the the uh, the authority needs to make the authoritative information just like in a server hosting system, just like in cloud based server, server hosts, server sens censored, the authority puts the information out there. And then we, the community, use that information to assimilate that out to and push that out to everybody else and make it more easy for all the creators to assimilate and gather and learn from. So that's videos, that's Reddit, that's Facebook posts, that's um, documents, that's how-to, that's prototypes, that's all that stuff. So in this solution, the creator is always getting official documents and guides as the source and the authority of everything. And CyberAx is now a sub, not a core. See back here, CyberAx is equal with the official guides. Wiki is equal with the official guides. We're doing what they're not. Instead here, we're taking what they've done and we're making it into something that's easier for the creator to learn from the official source. And what that does is it creates the proper feedback loop in this entire process. So now when you get into marketplace, you had one official source that gave us the data and those creators then use that to enhance their project and add more to the project, adding more features while not losing stability, while not raising the failure rate because their sources were doing trial and error instead of using a source material. This pushes the trial and error into Mojang, where it should be, where they have all the resources to figure out in the fastest means and manner how to get through the trial and error versus leaving it to the community that doesn't have access to any of those documents or source information or any of that. So just productivity-wise, having Mojang, the official source, be the one paying the cost for the, uh, the official information, the authority takes the cost away from CyberAx and the wiki guides and the community because we don't have to trial and error this. This is only, I mean, I can make a guide in 10 minutes. I, it takes me 100 hours to figure out how to make to do it to then make the guide. This removes all of that. It puts the burden on Mojang, the people making money in this. So we come back to here, and you see the, the burden of cost is on the wiki community, or the burden of cost is on Cyberax. The burden of cost is on Blockbench and Janus to update his stuff. The burden of cost is not on Microsoft. No cost is being paid by Microsoft in this solution. But yet they're profit. They're just putting all of that into their pockets versus in this solution, the sales goes to Mojang and Mojang takes part of those sales out and pays a cost and completes the feedback loop. We're game developers. Feedback loops, game loops matter. They complete the feedback loop so that money and investment that was made here it goes to here, profits, some of that profit comes back into official guides made by the authority, goes back into the guides, which then multiplies the community, and the community is now a wheel. It's a cycle. It's running. It's healthy. It's a healthy ecosystem that has a proper 
cause and effect, a proper cost being paid by who's profiting. And then when these creators make a mistake or they learn something wrong or they have a failure rate and they, they come back to the beginning here and they start recontributing and they say, oh, in the wiki, I think this part of the wiki needs to have this. The official guides and source challenge them. So now instead of them going right to the wiki, they go all the way back to the beginning where they should as a returning creator. And they go back into the correct system and the official guides challenge this misconception that the creator made. This makes the studio have a 1% to 5% failure rate. So now the studio has a better quality, more features, less failure rate as well. So not only did we help the personal projects that now have a lower failure rate, but we also help the studios who are the ones making the money and the products for Marketplace that Mojang profits from. So if Mojang and Microsoft want to profit more, they need to fix the feedback loop in the system, which is guides, so they pay the cost, by them paying the cost, there's an official authority now that fixes the failure rate in the studio, fixes the failure rate on personal projects, and fixes the feedback loop problem that they created here by not having an official authoritative source. See? Now, a lot of people keep saying, well, guides don't matter, CyberAx. The community should do all of that. It does matter. Now, if you want to go into other game ecosystems where there isn't a marketplace, Mojang isn't making money on this, and it's literally just the community making stuff and failure rates don't matter and features, and there is no customer in that situation, right? Because everybody's just a personal project. There is no actual customer paying for this content. But in this situation, a lot of this content being made is being paid by a customer here. That customer is a customer of Mojang and Microsoft's and this studio. So why is CyberAx and the Wiki Guides the main authority and official source to do, help studios meet their customers' needs and Mojang meet their customers' needs versus Mojang being the official authoritative source, paying the cost, putting that back into the feedback loop, which then brings it into here, which allows CyberX and the Wiki community to take the official authoritative information and enhance it and make it more easy for the creator to consume it, which is what I got into doing this for, not paying the cost and doing Mojang's job. I got in to try to make this easier for the creator. But Mojang is seeing that they can just use this model and make the community pay this cost, and they can just profit on the, the difference. But what that's done is the quality of the content has suffered dramatically. And instead of Mojang saying, wow, okay, this content is really suffering. We have failure rates. We have all these problems. Mojang's solution is to make this problem a thousand times worse by adding in JS and TS and translation into this and making the community pay even higher cost for an official source. So they're going to put all this stuff out in TS. Like, how about just falling blocks? So nobody can make falling blocks work. We don't know how to do it. The secret is neither does Mojang. What people don't understand is <clears throat> they put in a new system. 
So everything that they want to do now, they have to recreate the wheel from the ground up in the new system, and that's taking them months instead of days and weeks. They thought as programmers, oh, we'll just be able to recreate all these systems in TS and then JS, and we'll be able to get that out, and it'll take us no time at all, no time at all. But in reality, it's taking them weeks and months just to figure out how to do falling blocks, for example. And so then they put that out in TS, then the community has to convert it to JS, and then the community has to learn to get to JS, and then we have to merge that in with the JSON into the behaviors and into the actual game. So that entire cost now is being paid by the community 100%. Mojang's not doing anything to complete this feedback loop other than just the bare minimum of, hey, here's how... TS works or here's how the API works. That's it. They're not giving anything to complete this loop so that the customers have a better experience. The creators make more money. Mojang makes more money and the studios have a lower failure rate. Instead, they're compounding this problem by a thousand and their goal, their hope is, well, if we make this harder and make it more programmer centric, the returning customers will be programmers and that will just solve these failure rates. The problem is even the best programmers can't figure out how to make falling blocks still after year after year after year. So it doesn't matter, this could be a genius. This could be Al, you know, Albert Einstein shows up. You've got Elon Musk or whoever you think's the smart people in the world show up and they're not gonna be able to do this without failure rates, without trial and error and pain this cost because Mojang won't give us the authoritative re the authoritative source on how how this isn't like normal games this is Minecraft bedrock with custom stuff so you can't just take normal logic and say well we could just do this over here in Godot or in Unreal Engine 4 I know I do Unreal I've been doing Unreal Engine 3 4 and 5 you can't, it, something works, some things don't, but most of the back end logic is not the same. So this breaks the entire system. It just makes this a hundred times worse. And these failure rates now, when they get into mar marketplace, you know, if you've got 10,000 lines of uh, API code here, this is going to become a hellhole of trying to troubleshoot all these failure rates now. Currently, the failure rates with it just being JSON aren't too bad to troubleshoot and try to figure out and get these worked out once your customers start complaining. But once you release this game in a marketplace and your customers start complaining that there's stability and performance issues, trying to solve out the TS and JS problems throughout, you know, 10,000 or 100,000 lines of code is going to be a nightmare. And that's going to cost the creator more time and the studio more time, create more bad information into this loop, and Mojang didn't pay any cost for that. However, if you come back to this solution instead, even if Microsoft and Mojang add in TS and JS, because the feedback loop is correctly and healthy in this ecosystem, in this design, the official documents still error correct that problem so that even if you add TS and JS in the official guides, because you have this feedback loop and Mojang's paying the cost and fi fixing the self and the wiki community and cyber acts aren't trial and trial and airing this out, all of a sudden, this still continues to work. That's why the official guides are the linchpin and the entire thing. The entire thing of Marketplace and Mojang Solutions all come down to working if the documents function or if the community covers for Mojang and pays the cost instead. Because without this, there are no new creators, which means there are no marketplace. If there are no new creators, then there are no new, new features and new stuff. The creators that are already in the system have bad information and a high failure rate, and they're feeding themselves. So in the current system, the creators with the bad information are feeding the wiki, they're feeding the system, and that bad information is just getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And every loop it goes around, it gets worse. And the more you add TS and JS into this, the worse it's gonna get, the worse it's gonna get, because the 
the feedback loop has been forced onto the creators in a trial and error environment instead of forced onto Mojang in an authoritative environment. Now, if you've ever done server hosting or uh, distributed file management systems or syncing or anything where you have authoritative uh, sources versus non-authoritative, you learn very quickly how much of a nightmare this becomes when you don't have a proper authority in this equation versus this system. Now, what's the cost to, to Microsoft or Mojang to put guides in? So they have this, we, we switched to this system. They're making really good money right here. The ROI is insane. I, I could be wrong, but I believe the ROI on marketplace is higher than drug dealers get. <clears throat> it's like mobile gaming. It's insane. So they the money's there. They're just taking it as profit instead of putting it back into the community. Now, what would it take to do this? They hire, what, like one person full-time to do guides? So every day that person's kicking out two or three guides. And, you know, a year, that's a 1,000 guides. So one employee a year. What What's a guide employee at Mojang making? $60,000? So for $60,000, we could solve this entire game loop. We could increase the the failure or lower the failure rates throughout the entire system we could increase the features and the stability of, at the customer level so they're happier customers the studios could have lower failure rates so their staff are happier the creators don't have to do this trial and error system so they're happier returning customers can be anybody they could be programmers or they could be new creators or they could be first time because we have official sources so they don't have to go through that hell hole and the entire system functions properly so now that we've got to 30 minutes into this, do you think after all of this, guides matter and we just shouldn't hold Mojang accountable? Or do you see that guides are the centerpiece and the linchpin of the system to make it function properly? That's why it's not functioning properly. <clears throat> and by simply saying we're going to hire more qualified people doesn't solve the problem or we're going to raise the bar because everybody has to use the docs to learn how to do it. So I'm CyberX with Outlandishly Crafted, and this has been my guide on how Mojang and Marketplace is working today, why that's a problem, why that doesn't work, and why that needs to be fixed, and why I'm on a help strike, because if we don't get guides, honestly, none of this matters. It, it's all just going to continue to cycle and go to hell. And uh, TS and JS are just going to send it there faster. So yeah, if you'd like to help and subscribe, uh, check out the guides, check out the channel, uh, click that join button. We need all the joins we can get during this time. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, if you would like this information, these guides to be officially given to the community and Mojang to do their job and to, to pay this cost and to fix this, uh, please reach out to Mojang and uh, tell them that. Tell them that they need to fix this. Tell them they need to solve this. Um, because unless you complain and we all complain and we all start speaking out, <clears throat> we're going to continue to be stuck in this hellhole system that they've uh, you know, just pivoted around to creating. So, again, I'm Cyberx with Outlandishly Crafted. Thanks for watching.